Hi everyone, Ian from DIY Home and Gardening, 18th of February and uh, we're actually away this weekend but I thought I'd show you this really awful, awful looking fence line and garden and actually it got me thinking as to the fact that well my garden looks so much nicer, has so much more interest and the fact that the owner of this property which we're renting could do so much more especially with this shady wall that uh, well the property looks out onto so um yeah my plan is to do a, a top 10 or my top 10 of climbers suitable for a shady position growing in the uk so let's go inside out the rain and have a little chat So first up, but not necessarily the best, is Trachlyspermum jasminoides, common name star jasmine. Now this climber, an amazing climber um, for a light shade position, it will tolerate deep shade, but you'll get a lot less flowers. Now it's a really nice climber for being evergreen, it's pretty quick growing, has um, the best fragrance, so just think of a jasmine flower and the fragrance you get from that and that is what Trachlyspermum has which is why it's uh, the jasminoides bit of the Trachlyspermum which is jasmine like flower so it actually flower from May through to the end of September and you do notice as well come the autumn winter time then the foliage actually takes on this nice rich red purple coloration um, and that sort of stays with it until you get to about the February time, give it a good feed and then it reverts back to being the, uh, the nice glossy green. And the other thing that I really like with Trachlyspermum is that you can grow it in quite a, a small-ish size container actually, but it's great in a container, it will self-climb to a certain extent as well, but this is um, definitely a nice versatile multi-purpose climber. I think every garden needs to have one. So for my second climber, I've gone with a proper old school, nice cottage garden climber in uh, Lonisra periclinum Graham Thomas. Um, common name is Honeysuckle. Now this is a deciduous climber, so it loses its leaves over the winter period, but don't let that stop you from wanting it in your garden. Uh, as you can see in the, the photo of it, it produces an absolute mass of flower throughout um, late spring into summer. And those flowers are, all come out as that nice, vibrant golden yellow with um, a sort of pale yellow uh, outer petals, if you want to call that. And as the flowers sort of age, then they turn a nice pale buttermilk yellow coloration and once the flowers go they actually give way to the small red glossy berries that the birds absolutely love so you will find that with this climb you get um, yeah a mess of flower a mess of fragrance and it really does encourage plenty of wildlife to come into the garden as well so uh, you just can't beat it really as I say it's fantastic on a, a part shade wall and it is quick to cover so um, yeah works really well for that side of things and a good classic combination is growing honeysuckles with clematis or with roses so you can really add up the uh, the interest into a small space so following on from the honeysuckle number three good planting combination roses so this one is probably my favorite for a shady position it is rosa melvin hill so it's actually a david austin variety and it's a rambler as opposed to a normal climber and the difference being is that it absolutely produces a plethora of small flowers rather than a climber that just produces sort of more singular large flowers but um, melvin hills is a fantastic rambler and it will repeat flower so you'll get sort of good coverage of flower for many months uh, it is another deciduous climber being a rose so it will lose its leaves over the winter period but don't let that put you off 
So um, as I say, masses of flowers, all with this nice egg yolk, uh, yellow, soft, pale yellow mixes, and you'll get that mixes throughout the uh, the clusters of the flowers. So it isn't a, a one um, one colour. Uh, and then fading it is a multitude of sort of these tones of the yellows and they all have a lovely musky scent to them so it's a real old fashioned climber and uh, very nostalgic in uh, in terms of how it makes you feel and being a rambler as well it means that it's very vigorous so it, it will quickly cover a couple of fence panels over a course of about three seasons but the advantage with this rose is that it has next to no thorns. So, uh, you know, you haven't got any worries when it comes to doing your pruning or your tying in of, of this one. And when we're dealing with shade, this is a really good go-to climber or go-to rambler, we'll say, for a shady position because it actually grow on a north-facing wall and produce flowers. And there's not too many plants that will do that for you. So definitely one to remember. So at number four, this one is quite an unusual climber, to be honest, in as much as probably not a lot of people have come across it, but it is such a great climber. It's called Akebia quinata, or chocolate vine as the uh, common name, and we'll come to the, the common name in a moment, but the, th the good thing with this climber is that it's semi-evergreen. So for most of the time, certainly down the south of uh, England or UK, it will retain its foliage. In a harder winter, it will drop more foliage than it retains, but it's a really good, tough climber, self-climbing, so or twining, I should say. So if you put some wires up or some trellis, then it will do the, the job for you. It will climb its way up through without too much fuss at all. Now... Coming on to the flowers, it produces absolute um, abundance of these sort of mauvey, maroon flowers. And as the common name suggests, well, they actually have a nice fragrance like chocolate. So, you know, who wouldn't want a, a, a flower that smells like chocolate, especially when it's out in spring and it, it will, again, it will be flowering its heart out for about six to eight weeks. Really vigorous. Um does benefit from uh, having a good hard prune back every couple of years but aside from that you know you haven't got to do anything with it at all so really good recommendation there so we come to number five now this is a, another good old-fashioned looking climber uh, you see it kind of pretty much in every gardening book every magazine where they're doing a, a cottage garden or an old period property this one is hydrangea petiolaris and it is a climbing hydrangea and it looks very much like a, a, a climbing lace cap and because essentially that's what it is um, it is self-climbing it takes uh, it takes a year or, or two before it kind of finds its way and starts developing some vigor to it so for the first couple of years you'll need to give it a bit of support but then after that it will self-cling and it will cling itself onto brickwork or fencing um, you kind of name it it will cling to it uh, it is deciduous so it loses its leaves over the winter but um, as it uh, as it loses its leaves, it actually gives way to I think possibly the nicest part of it, which is it has this lovely bronze maroon bark, and as as the stems age, then they also develop this sort of peeling habit to it. So you get this nice texture and appearance, even when it doesn't have the uh, the leaf to it. Um, just a yeah, a nice plant. Um, nice and simple to look after it it doesn't require loads and loads of water like a, a typical shrub hydrangea does either so pretty good in terms of that respect and happy to grow in a, a part shade or a fairly deep shade position so that is also really useful okay so we're on number six already and um well i don't know whether you've guessed what the uh, the plant is by the image but it is another type of honeysuckle. Doesn't look like it, but it is. So this one is Lonicera henryi copper beauty. 
And the reason that I love this climber is the fact that, well, one, it's evergreen, so it retains its leaf all year round. But I think probably the most important thing for me is that it adds that foliage interest. You know, so many of these um, plants that are good for a shady position are always a plain green, whereas Copper Beauty has these nice copper, bronzy colour tones to it, which really helps lift sort of a, a dark area, um, especially when you end up with the uh, the fresh growth that is the bronze sort of being picked up with the, the darker, more mature green leaf. And then it also flowers at the same time whilst it's going into its growth stage. So you get these absolute masses of um, sort of, well, bright golden yellow flowers throughout June and July and uh, just really highlights against that foliage. Now, those flowers, they will fade to sort of being a more egg yolk yellow, but um, they still look really good, especially on mass. The only slight downside with this honeysuckle is it doesn't actually have a fragrance to it, but, you know, can't have everything, can it? But definitely a good introduction for um, being on a, a shady position. Okay, so number seven is this clematis, and it is probably one of my favourite clematis. Uh, it's actually called Clematis macropetula Markham's Pink. Now, I love it. It is such a good growing plant, or growing Clematis for a shady position. It's fast growing. It is deciduous, which does, does mean that you won't have that leaf colour or coverage during the winter time. But that's not really um, yeah, a reason not to include it. It produces absolutely masses of these candy floss pink flowers in early spring. So we're talking April and May. And then following on from those flowers, it then leaves behind these sort of nice silvery, almost spider-like seed heads. And they just hang on throughout the, the summer period, sometimes into the autumn. So you get a nice sort of, well, probably six months of um, flower and seed head interest which you know really works well and then together with that the the green it's a lovely soft green so if you've got some nicer vibrant flowers sitting in front of that then it, it works really well as a, a good green backdrop um, so yeah it, it's got plenty going on the other advantage with this clematis is it is self-twining so it's quite happy to find its own way up some trellis work or some um, wires or if you really want to make a good statement plant it just at the base of a, a tree like an old tree or something or a hedge and you'll scramble its way quite happily through that tree and hedge give you masses of flowers at sort of a good height and uh, sort of just adds a little bit more interest. Alternatively, what you can do and what I've done previously is you can grow it without any support and then just use some uh, tent pegs or bits of twig and you can grow it across the ground and it becomes this nice floral underplanting uh, underneath a tree and so because it's quite happy in a shady position it, it's a nice floral canopy but belief what would be a fairly barren spot so yeah a good recommendation i think for a, a shady position there right okay so i've got this climber in it's a bit of a curveball one actually this one um i have put it in just because it's so good and it's called drigia sinensis and when you see it, you'll realise why I've included it. But it's not necessarily going to be suitable for the whole of the UK. Definitely down south, it'll be fine. Up north, you'll need to bring it in over the winter time because it's only really tolerant of temperatures down to about minus five. And it does need to have a sheltered position as well. But it's such a nice climber. I just had to put it in. Um, Evergreen foliage, so it retains the leaves all year round, and they have this lovely soft green appearance to the to the top side, and then this sort of grey hairy underside to them. So you get a nice foliage interest, and they've actually got quite a nice 
sort of almost heart-shaped look about them as well. It's, it is a vigorous climber, it's self-twining, so give it a bit of support and it'll find its way up. And it's going to grow upwards to the brightest spot and puts on all the flower onto the fresh growth. So that's, that sort of tells you that um, if you give it a hard prune back, then you, you're just going to get rewarded with plenty of flowers. And those flowers come in, uh, I suppose, sort of mid to late summer. And the flowers look really tropical. Uh, they look a bit like a hoya plant, which is um, a house plant, but it's that sort of waxy um, leaf, um, waxy flower. It's a nice pure white, and then it has this lovely purple speckling through the throat of it, and they just have the most amazing fragrance as well. So, as I say, a bit of a curveball, but... If you seek this climber out or find it, then you'll understand exactly why I've put it in this, uh, this video. Now, this climber, you might think is a hydrangea, but it isn't. It's actually called Schizophragma hydrangeoides moonlight, and I absolutely love it. Um, the only downside I would say is that it's not that widely available, which is a real shame because it, it should really be in every garden. I think it's so good, you know, it's really tolerant of a, a deep shade position. Now, it, it is a stunning climate. It produces these lovely heart-shaped leaves that have these nice silver um, sort of undertones to them and then they have the green veins that run through it so it has sort of this marble effect but the green just really makes the silver pop just shimmers you know so really nice and that um that leaf as it goes into the the late summer into autumns it then develops these lovely orange yellow tones before they obviously finally drop off now flower wise Clusters of flowers midsummer it looks uh, very reminiscent of the hydrangea petillaris that we saw earlier in the video, and I guess that's you know the hydrangeoides part of it is a you know, hydrangea-like flower, um, but yeah, it isn't a hydrangea, and I'd say it's probably tougher than a hydrangea. Um, again, it's going to take a couple of years to get established, but then after that, it's just on its way. It's uh, another good self climber, and it again it works really well um, being put up a tree or on a wall where you can really show off that leaf color and the, the flower and say up a tree, then it gives you that nice understory planting and just kind of adds another dimension, especially if you think about putting up like a I don't know. Ace of Grisium or something where you've got that lovely bark to uh, bark colour to work with as well. So, yeah, definite inclusion for, for me. So, um, this one is my second Clematis, and this is number 10. It's Clematis Nelly Moser. And to be honest, I had to include it as Nelly's been around forever and just, I guess, really proven her reliability for uh, performance and flower power and just I guess staying the, the course of time with pretty much again every garden seemingly having one over the lifetime you know it's in every garden and magazine it always makes an appearance at Chelsea, Hampton Court you name it Nelly's there. Uh, deciduous clematis so it will lose its leaves during the winter time. It's self-twining, so needs very little work to actually support it. Just give it some wire or trellis work. And actually, for most clematis, this one is is that probably happiest when it's planted in a shaded position. Um, definitely does better in a shady spot compared to with a, a sunny spot. In the sunny spot, you find that the flower just fades so, so quickly, whereas in the shade, it just retains this nice, glorious colour of the, the striking pink uh, flower colour with that um, darker band that runs through or crossing section, really sort of punctuates that flower. There's nothing really like it. And especially when you think that these flowers are about 20 centimetres across, so sort of a, a real good 
statement of uh, of colour, and it will repeat flower from late spring to early summer, and if it hasn't done that and that's not inspiring enough it will then go on to flower again late summer into early autumn um, so really does well and following on from flowers a bit like we saw with the back petula earlier it would then produce these lovely sort of pom-pom seed heads which then just linger on into uh, the um well the early parts of winter also a really good climber if you want to include it in a, a planted container. Quite happy. Just make sure you get them roots so in a slightly cooler spot. And like we discussed earlier, clematis and roses work really well together. So you can do that lovely rose clematis combo in a container. Stick it on your patio. Nice shady spot. And then you've got a nice continuity of flower throughout the whole of spring and summer. Works so well. Um... So, yeah, another good addition, I think. Number 10, but it doesn't mean it's the worst. Definitely not. Just doing these how I thought of them. And so that is it. That's my top 10 climbers for a shady, part shady position done. Um, yeah, filmed indoors whilst uh, it's still raining. But, um, you know, hopefully adding a little bit of uh, interest and inspiration to a, a fairly drab day. So, so we've got 10 climbers there, all with really good properties about them. I've added in the ivy as well. But if you've got any other suggestions, then be more than happy to listen to those. I say this this video really is for the UK uh, listeners, just um, because that's where my field of knowledge is based upon. But yeah, quite happy to learn about some other climbers from around the world. So if you've enjoyed the video, then thanks for listening. Hope you enjoyed it enough to want to subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to hit that reminder button so you don't miss out on future videos that I'm doing. And I always say it, but it's so true. Just have fun, enjoy yourself, try something different. And 
if you find one of the climbers on this video of interest and a bit inspirational, seek it out in the garden centre or nursery, have a look and you know, maybe try it out in your own garden. See if it's all that uh, it's cracked up to be. So, till next time, bye for now. Thank you.